Hi all, um, thanks everybody for attending this conference. <laughs> um, uh, this is just to give you a sketch of what we do when we don't organize these such long conferences here. And uh, I know that I'm in between you and the lunch, so I will be fast. <laughs> this, this is about to be fast, I promise. And uh, the work that I'm going to present has been done in collaboration with uh, many people, and in particular, uh, Sani Vagnozzi, who is a very super smart uh, PhD student here. And I know that this is not the time for acknowledgement, but still I would like to thank Jon for sharing all the workload uh, here, especially during these days. And uh, now we'll start with the scientific content. So uh, we like to play with uh, neutrinos and especially relic neutrinos, which unfortunately decoupled from the primordial plasma too early uh, to benefit from the entropy released due to electron positron annihilation. And this is the reason why uh, today, uh, unfortunately, it is extremely difficult to observe them directly. Uh, nevertheless, in the past decades, uh, we became so good at tracking the footprints of uh, neutrinos, of relic neutrinos and cosmological observables, and so to constrain their uh, properties uh, indirectly by looking at cosmological observables. From laboratory experiments, we know that uh, we are dealing with uh, EV or sub-EV uh, neutrinos, so they were fully relativistic in the early universe and their uh, contribution can be parameterized in terms of uh, uh, the ineffective parameters and we uh, have already heard uh, how many cool th things we can do by constraining better and effective with cosmological observables. But in, uh, in the late time universe, uh, neutrinos became fully non-relativistic, so their contribution to the energy content can be parameterized to, uh, through the sum of, uh, uh, of their masses of their masses. And we have already heard uh, the effect of massive neutrinos on uh, large-scale structures, how they modify uh, the evolution and the growth of large-scale uh, structures. So here I will mostly focus on uh, uh, the CMB. Uh, cosmic neutrinos modify uh, the history of the universe both at the level of background and perturbation evolution. So for example, they can alter uh, the epoch of matter radiation equality, but they also alter the way in which large-scale structures evolve. So, uh, basically, the bottom line, the bottom line is that uh, changing the neutrino masses in our feet, uh, we can change the shape of the CMB power spectrum. This is the uh, TT uh, CMB power spectrum. And up to WMAP, uh, we were able to constrain neutrino masses by looking at the effect that they have, especially on the first acoustic peak. But with the uh, current generation, and especially with the future generations of cosmological probes, we are able to uh, look at the effect that they have uh, indirectly by modifying uh, the, uh, the large-scale structures because they modify uh, their evolution, so they modify the source of the gravitational potential uh, uh, and they modify the amount of lens in induced by large-scale structures that we can recover by looking at this part of the CMB uh, power spectrum. So when we combine all of, the, all of this information together, we can uh, extract some, some numbers, we can extract some constraints on the sum of the neutrino masses. Here M nu uh, stands for the sum of the three uh, neutrino masses. And if we combine especially CMB uh, temperature with the um, data set that we consider uh, more reliable, the most reliable data sets, then we uh, end up with these 95% upper bounds on the sum of the neutrino masses, which are the most constraining but yet robust bounds that we can put on the sum of the neutrino masses uh, um, coming from all the uh, observables that we can think uh, about when we want to constrain uh, the, uh, the absolute scale of the neutrino masses. And we expect to improve these constraints uh, increasingly by adding more data set, in particular by a better measurement of the polarization, both at small and large scales, as we have heard uh, many times during these days, until we can reach eventually the first measurement of the neutrino masses by means of cosmological observables, which is very promising even in the minimal mass scenario allowed by uh, the normal hierarchy. And since we are getting so good, at constraining neutrino masses, we can ask if we can go beyond this, if we can constrain even other properties of uh, uh, massive neutrinos. 
what can we say about the hierarchy with cosmology, for example? Uh, so we uh, tried this exercise and um, we proposed this model for uh, assessing the sensitivity to, uh, cosmological, of cosmological probes to uh, the hierarchy and simply when we uh, sample our parameter space uh, com um, composed by uh, the standard cosmological parameters plus the sum of the neutrino masses, we introduced this additional discrete parameter which simply allows us to uh, choose between the two different hierarchies, normal hierarchies, either normal hierarchies or inverted hierarchy. And uh, what we do is simply to extract this discrete parameter at each step of our Monte Carlo and then model uh, the spectrum of the neutrino masses accordingly uh, to this choice. And this is a very straightforward and useful method because if we at the end of our um, sampling simply uh, marginalize over all the other cosmological parameters but this one, then we can get, uh, then we can assess the sensitivity uh, of cosmological observable to, uh, to the hierarchy simply by looking at the posterior distribution of this parameter that we convey in terms of odds, uh, probability odds of normal hierarchy versus inverted hierarchy. And here I reported uh, some, some of the most important results, which is this um, mild, mild preference for normal hierarchy in the case of current data set, which is Planck uh, temperature and polarization combined uh, with barium acoustic oscillation. Uh, and it is indeed a very mild preference for normal hierarchy. And uh, we also repeated the exercise for casting future uh, cosmological observables, CM, both CMB and barium acoustic oscillations, for two different fiducial models. So in the case in which we um, consider a fiducial model with 0.06 EV total neutrino mass, then we have a striking uh, evidence of normal hierarchy versus inverted hierarchy, as you can imagine. But in the case of 0.1 EV fiducial mass, which is the minimal mass uh, allowed by the inverted hierarchy scenario, then we completely lose sensitivity to the hierarchy. So the bottom line of this exercise is that unfortunately, at least for this combination of data set, the uh, entire sensitivity of, cosmo of cosmology to the hierarchy is induced by so-called volume effect. So by the fact that if we go below 0.1 EV, then only normal hierarchy survives. So normal hierarchy is preferred with, with respect to inverted hierarchy just because it has access to a larger portion of the parameter space. <laughs> And to conclude, I would just like to take a different point of view and say that it is important to constrain, uh, to the best of our knowledge, neutrino masses because they can act as nuisance parameters than when we try to constrain other cosmological parameters, for example, inflationary parameters, because of slight degeneracies between the total neutrino masses and other cosmological parameters, for example, uh, the scalar spectral index because uh, we can uh, keep uh, the shape of the power spectrum more or less fixed by playing with these uh, two, two parameters. And you can see here in the standard NSR plane how the constraints in the case of the lambda CDM plus tensor um, uh, cosmological model can be broadened if we marginalize over the uh, uncertain neutrino mass. Just compare the green curve with the uh, gray, uh, gray curve. And this could be important, for example, when we want to uh, assess uh, the um, agreement between uh, uh, data and uh, uh, theoretical uh, inflationary model, for example. So I will leave with my conclusion and I would like to thank everybody. And since we are already late. I'm happy to answer to all your questions offline if you prefer to go straight to lunch. Thank you.